Hello and welcome to another Maple Story 2 video. I know I'm a little bit outdated when it comes to making videos regarding life skills and every other things that you can do as for your daily things. Now, I would like to share some tip, I guess, for those that are still struggling. Um, so if you have noticed that some people are struggling when you have the low uh, success rates, uh, you keep standing here and gathering, 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 and never pops up. Uh, a tip for that is you need to have at least one of these vouchers that you can get from events, or you can. Uh, I believe, yeah, most of them are from events. You can purchase them from Cash Up, by the way. But uh, most of these are from events, and these consumes when you use the auto farm button. Uh, what it does is when you click on auto farm it will tell you how many do you want to gather and it will give you you know the maximum amount you can get from that node so going from this on the pine mushroom i can click on max it says there's only one remaining but if i'm still struggling why would i bother to you know gather one more you can check how many there are left so let's go to the rice paddy where it says hi click on auto farm click on max and here it's telling me that you can only get 13 in total from this node. So if you're struggling with a node that is stuck at low all the time, uh, what you can do is click on auto farm, click on max, see how much you have remaining. If it's only one remaining, don't bother with it. It's not important to you know, s s you know spend all your time, like let's say 30 minutes trying to mine that node all the time. Like. Uh, you can just ignore it. Of course, it does depend on your mastery level. Um, if you do need that mastery level to level up to min-max every day, I would say go for it if you want to spend that extra time to mine that. But uh, make sure that if you're looking through the uh, mastery gains on each node, it will deplete, like it won't give you any more when you're at higher ranks. So Rice Pet wouldn't give me anything anymore. But if I go to, let's say, let's see, where does it start? With wheat. So if it, once I'm at the wheat field, which is at the very, very end, this, is, will, this will give me two mastery. The mushroom over here will give me seven, and then the last one will give me 13. So if you are struggling with the previous ones, and it says low on them, like as you can see over here, that I have on cucumber, there's on low, there's two remaining. I don't want to bother standing here failing okay maybe i'm getting lucky now but yeah as you can see I, I keep failing now i believe yeah it's not worth getting that one extra spending time uh trying to loot because cucumber won't give me any mastery as i showcased uh cucumber does not give me anything so it's not worth it just go to the next one and you know gather as much as possible while you're having the effects of your consumables that gives you double the amount of uh, drops um so yeah make sure to use the auto farm button see how much you have remaining on each node if they are standing on low i would not recommend going past like if you're going down to about 10 i would say move on to the next one because around 10 ish it will start to fail a little bit from time to time so that's my recommendation for people that wants to do gathering it's the same thing with mining and foraging and uh, obviously doing the uh, ranching as well. Um, another thing I would recommend is when you do certain gathering, you might sometimes wonder, I don't want to do everything, right? You don't want to gather everything, it's not worth it. Or I would say it really depends on what kind of craft you are doing. So for smithing, for example, I never found anything good about this unless you're leveling your smithing then obviously go for the whatever that's highest uh, to get you mastery granted but you only do whetstones with smithing is what I realized and what I usually do is I pick uh, platinum whetstones and then I pick uh, tin whetstones obviously these are from the uh, mining nodes and when you do mining you're gonna have to look at what you want to gather so if you already got up to platinum i would say these two remaining isn't really that important so picking platinum and tin would be your main goal skip the rest because they won't give you uh, you won't have any benefit from it so if you plan ahead with your crafting you can actually just skip a lot of time 
just picking up, you know, whatever that you need to make your daily crafts for buffs or whatnot. Now, I would like to talk about certain veins, for example, on the mining. Uh, as you can see, some of them gives you two items, some of them gives you one item. So cobalt gives you mine pearled, uh, gold gives you amber. You can just click through it and you will see Ra raven steel gives you amethyst, nickel doesn't give anything, lead gives you diamond, iron is only bare, and then silver gives you sapphire, and so on and so on. So these extra items, uh, or gems, or whatever you should call them, um, these are used for crafting. So if you do want to min-max, I would recommend going for uh, those that has double the thing, the double drop, so you can use these secondary materials for other crafting. So it tells you over here, if you hover your mouse, what you can craft, or you can just go to the crafting list and will tell you what you need. So for example, the slate will require me to use opal, but since I'm using uh, my opals on whetstones, I don't really use this anymore, considering that it's not even worth it, but yeah. It's just an average, like, you, you should plan ahead, write things down. Um, same thing with the crafting here, with handicraft, with ranching, like what do you want to craft? Do you want to craft earrings? write down or, and memorize what you need obviously it says you need mine pearl so this will combine with the mining for example the pearl was dropped from the cobalt beam so if you are in need to craft earrings make sure to uh, gather some cobalt as well because you get the mine pearl over here um, and likewise with the um, crafting potions as such you can see there are different bloom dusts uh, sometimes you get the uh, the blue one, sometimes you get the green one, and that's the same thing with foraging. So when you check through each uh, herb that you want to pick, some of them have dust, some don't don't have. So you want to make sure you want to loot on specific ones. It's obviously every uh, second gives you a dust, I believe. Yeah, every second tier gives you a dust. So make sure to loot those if you need these uh, extra material to craft other things. Uh, and for the last part for crafting here, um, um, cooking especially, I usually don't gather any of these mushroom, agaric mushroom, because I don't have any usage of getting experience 200% unless you really need that XP. Uh, what I usually do is obviously crispy fried chicken for the raiding. Uh, so you can buff up your party members. So you have to focus on getting pears, cucumbers, banana, pine mushroom, and then green bloom dust. And green bloom dust was from um, basil. And that's where you get all your green bloom dust. So write them down, make sure that you have a plan and you can skip a lot of things that you want to gather. You don't want you don't want to make craft everything, but if you do have an OCD yourself or if you're a completionist, feel free to gather as much as you want. But remember that you will have a daily crafting limit of 1000, uh, but you can always stock up no matter what. I don't use all of these items, so that's why I'm just recommending, for example, crispy fried chicken is one of them, pear chips is uh, something I use from time to time. Um, we can get the Alina Mega Blueberries, which is also a raid buff. That's also important, so get tomato, green onion, apples, and red bloom dust. Um, another thing would be Cap Capri Salad and the Banana Sandwich. These two are uh, defensive food buffs that you can use, and that's about it. I don't use anything else from cooking, so I'm saving myself some time by not picking up rice, for example. I don't pick up any pumpkin. Uh, but I do pick up some apples on the go and pine mushroom as we saw earlier or mentioned earlier. So make make a list and write down what you need and what you want to craft. I mean, obviously it's not that hard. It's the same thing with uh, alchemy. You pick bergamot, uh, flowers, oregano, tea tree, lemon balm, and then green bloom as we mentioned from basil. So I would say the easiest one out of these that you want to get rid of uh, quickest would be smithing, considering that you only craft the uh, whetstones. And then the rest of these are optional. Handicraft is more for the money making and 
alchemy is for your buffs cooking is also for your buffs for yourself or for settling it's really up to you what you want to do with those uh, pr produced items that you'd make um, let me bring my uh, discord so as you can see here I've written this down before uh, you just make a list pretty much if you want to get mining gloves or whetstones only uh, as you can see there are some items that I've written it down what gives me the extra item opal, sapphire, diamond, amethyst, amber, blah 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 and what I needed the most was platinum and tin most of the time which is what I do right now I skip everything else because I only need whetstones for foraging if you want to do candles supplements to get that double drop rate or tonics for your buffs there are some few items uh, there's more items here or uh, herbs that you need to forage and harvest uh, but my recommendation would be only for the special warrior tonics or whatever class you're choosing Ma mage tonic is the same uh, ingredient but yeah and then for uh, ranching it's literally accessory boxes music score and pouches which is also for double drop uh, but it's also for yeah anything else that you want to use on this side uh, so for ranching I named them all because all of them are really really good but that's only if you plan on wanting to make some RNG boxes uh, but otherwise you can skip it entirely if you don't care too much about it and farming is obviously really really good because you can make yourself your own buffs instead of purchasing in black market you can also make chips which is the double drop item uh, that you can use and then XP food in case you need to level up a character really quick or something then you can uh, get some extra materials from there as well but it's not all the items in comparison to ranching but yeah that's all I had to uh, talk about for this video sorry for the late um, video guide I guess um, I hope this was helpful obviously try to uh, make a plan write down what you need uh, make it as a habit uh, if it doesn't really uh, like I hope it, this will give you a little bit more time to you know spend a little bit less on gathering especially with the auto gathering or uh, auto mining thingy uh, because that's one of the tricks that I could always check if you're too lazy to you know be stuck on on a node for like 30 minutes or whatnot but uh, other than that uh, it's all up to you what you want to gather but this is my tip of uh, what you want to craft uh, in general to make yourself some profit or to make yourself have some extra items for raiding anyways thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one